Good evening and welcome to tonight's talk on Scenes in New York City with artist Don Sexton. I will start us off with an introduction. Some of you may have recall that uh, Don has exhibited with us at the Harrison Public Library in the past as a virtual exhibition and we're thrilled that he's hosting this second virtual exhibition with us and it is, you can view it, you can access it on the Harrison Library website. A little bit about Don, he lives in Tribeca in New York City. His studio is in Goshen, Connecticut. He has studied painting, drawing, printmaking and etching at Wesleyan University and the New School and the Stacy Studio Workshop in New York City and at the American Center for the Arts in Paris. His paintings have been exhibited in numerous shows in New York and Connecticut have received several awards and are in collections in the United States, Europe, and Australia. He's frequently engaged for commission projects. His works are mixed media, ink, and oil pastel on paper, and he has developed a unique technique that begins by sketching the subject with black ink. Oil pastels provide color. Finally, water-based inks are applied and bring out the rich, vivid hues in his work. So, uh, I've mentioned this, I'll mention it again, that uh, Don has a solo exhibition right now called Great Cities of the World on view from June 6th through August 12th at the New Amsterdam Library on 9 Murray Street. So now I will turn this over to you, Don. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much Giovanna. Thanks, uh, nice introduction, I appreciate it. And um, I'd like to welcome all of you who are joining us tonight. Thanks you for spending some time with us. And I hope you'll find it uh, interesting and maybe a little fun. Um, what I'm going to do uh, is talk about the exhibition, I'll talk a bit about my painting technique, which Giovanni mentioned. And uh, at the very end, frankly, I'll remind you again of the show I have in New York City. So uh, I have all that information ahead of you. So um, if you want to take any of it down, then you have plenty of time. So again, this, uh, this particular exhibition is called Scenes of New York City. Um, I've lived in New York City actually over 50 years, and uh, I think it's a great city. And over the years, I've done paintings of New York as well as places elsewhere around the world. But we're going to focus on New York City. This is the exhibit, in fact. Uh, there are 20 images, 20 paintings in the exhibit. And I'm going to talk you, to you a little bit about each one of these as we go through the, uh, the hour or so talk. Uh, why I painted them, how I painted them, what I thought they mean, um, what was fun about it. So hopefully you'll find this uh, interesting. Um, you already heard a bit about my bio, so I won't go through it in any detail, but I started painting back when I was a, a student at Wesleyan back in 1959, that's a long time ago. And since then, I've also taken courses elsewhere. Of course, one of the most fun places was the American Center for the Arts in Paris. I could have stayed there for 20 years, but we had to get back. So I only spent a few weeks there. But uh, again, each of these institutions or schools helped me with certain parts of my work. For example, in the middle there, you see the Coho School of Sumi-E. Um, one of the ways I paint, I use brush and inks a lot. And so I found this helped refine my, uh, my ability to use ink. Uh, Washington Art Association, I worked with them on portraiture. New School, I worked a lot with them on uh, uh, all kinds of things, uh, nudes, uh, landscapes, and so on. When you're an artist, and I'm sure some of you are painters, maybe all of you are painters, one of the things galleries always ask you for is, what is your artist's statement? Well, mine is very simple. My works, my stories. Um, I'm very uh, retro in a way, I'm representational, and my paintings, I try to make them tell stories. So here you have three examples. On the left, you have the Goshen Fair. My studio is up in Goshen, that's way up in Northwest Connecticut, and they like to call it the world famous Goshen Fair. And if you look at that painting closely, you see there are a lot of stories in it, including not only one, but two mothers holding their sons back who want to go play the ball game and win one of the big stuffed animals. The middle is also from the Goshen Fair. Um, it's a photo I took based on a photo I took of these uh, two kids uh, discovering the, um, the wonders of, of, uh, of games of chance at the, um, at the fair. And I always wondered what they were talking about. On the right-hand side, you have another one. 
with children. Um, I have paintings with children, without children, all sorts of subjects. But there you see left on the road is a teddy bear. And actually I saw this and I, I said, you know, I bet someone's really unhappy tonight. And if you look ahead, uh, there's a car there and there's a little face looking out of the car back at the teddy bear, again, a story. I always like to say though, I'm, I'm really working on a painting now where what happens is the car goes up the hill, turns around, comes back, gets the teddy bear and the child is happy. Trust me. Um, I've been in many shows. These are just some photos from some of the shows I've been in. Uh, actually, some of my family is in some of these shows, uh, some of these pictures. But again, it will give you a little idea. Uh, any of you, again, who are painters, uh, you love shows. As I said, I'm going to have a, I have a show opening now. And in fact, the reception is Thursday night. And should any of you be in New York City area, you might be interested in dropping by. Love to see you. Um, various awards. I won't go through all of them, but my paintings have won awards in different shows over time. Now I'm focusing mainly on solo shows rather than joint shows. Uh, solo shows gives me a chance to show more of my work so you can see more of what I do and how I do it. Um, these are newspaper articles. That will be your homework for tonight to read these articles. There'll be a quiz tomorrow. But again, these are just about some of the things I've done. And you see some of the things I've kept. The, the painting on the left, by the way, is the Spanish Steps. And that's in the show in New York City. Also on the right, you see another little painting. That's the Tuileries Gardens in Paris. So again, a number of you may be familiar with that. That's also in the show in New York. I use both oils and mixed media. Uh, mixed media is a technique I've developed, which is rather special. Um, I'll get to that in a moment, but I use them for different reasons. Oils I use when I want to develop a mood. You can see in these paintings on the left, the Arc de Triomphe, the Kremlin, uh, and then that painting I mentioned to you about the Tuileries Gardens. Uh, the oil gives you more depth of feeling. In contrast, I've developed a technique with mixed media, which allows me to produce more vivid colors, as Giovanna mentioned, and also uh, allows more um, care, care in being able to draw things. Um, for example, on the bottom left, the painting is in the show that I'm going to go through of the man selling flags. Uh, that was based on a photo I took after a parade in downtown Manhattan. And at least for me, uh, using my technique of mixed media allowed me to get much more detail in the painting than if I was just using oil. I'll show you how that works in a second. This is my mixed media technique and I developed it. I'm sure other people do and I, I've just never met them yet. Um, the first thing I do with mixed media and that's gonna be a lot, that's gonna be the majority of the paintings I'm gonna show you uh, as we go through this evening. Uh, the first thing I do is I draw the painting with black ink. Uh, this is a Sharpie. I also used a brush and I can see that uh, with black ink. That's the first step. Second step, I apply oil pastels. Again, if you're an artist, you know an oil pastel is a really greasy crayon. If you're not an artist, these are not your Crayolas. These cost $5 each piece, each pastel. They're very greasy. Their colors are fantastic. So I draw and then I put the colors and then I add colored ink. And the ink is water-based. So when I put the water-based ink on the oil pastels, well, you see what happens. The water makes the oil, makes the colors jump out. Now, this happened to be a painting of my daughter's wedding some years ago. Um, so that's her actually, you can see in the wedding dress. But when I finished the painting, I realized I had forgotten one important thing, the groom. So you always want to add the groom in your paintings of weddings, at least most people do. So anyway, I, I uh, was able to just squeeze them in there next to my, my daughter. They're happily married. Um, I also used to do a lot of work on plein air outside. And that was great when I was a, a bit younger, but uh, I haven't done that for about 10 years because this is all the stuff I had to carry. I had to carry paper, easel, uh, a table, brushes, and water, and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so I didn't do that. I could tell you a little story though when I was doing it. This is a, the square in Prague, main square in Prague. And again, a number of you may know it. Beautiful square, beautiful city. Uh, that church I have painted many times. It's the Church of Our Lady before time. 
and I love it. Uh, I could almost paint it without looking anymore. Here are just a few paintings I did. You notice, by the way, when you paint outdoors like this, um, at least for me, my brush gets more energetic and I don't worry too much about um, accuracy of the drawing. Uh, when I paint in the studio, I feel I gain an ability to draw, but I lose ability in excitement. And, you know, I, I just <laughs> haven't been able to sort that one out yet. So anyway, I'm in Prague and I, I taught there for a couple of years. I'm in Prague, I'm in the square and I'm setting up. It usually takes me a few minutes to get my easel up and everything else when I'm painting outdoors. And as I, 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 I get my things ready, I notice a crowd is gathering. Now I I'm typically get three, four, five, six people standing behind me as I, as I get ready to paint because they like to watch me paint. It's kind of fun apparently. And they like to see, especially when I put the inks on top of the oil pastels because then the, the colors really jump out. Well, I soon had a crowd of 40 or 50 and I say, what's going on here? I'm not that famous, 40 or 50. Well, it turns out where I was standing was right where the Prague Square Dance Club dances every Sunday afternoon. And so as I was standing there, the Prague Square Dancing Club comes around and frankly, uh, and surrounds me and that's why they were there. And it was really difficult, frankly, to paint, you know, while they were dancing around me to the Alamann left and everything. No, I'm just kidding, I left. I gave them their space. So in New York City, I painted, if any of you were happened to be in the talk that I gave last, uh, last fall for my 9-11 show, those were 25 paintings I had done after 9-11. And all of those were done on plein air I, in Manhattan. I live about mm, 10, 10 blocks from ground zero. And in the two or three months after 9-11 tragedy, I was downtown on plein air painting people standing with their loved ones looking at the uh, ground zero site. But again, that was some years ago. I don't do on plein air anymore. So I live in Tribeca, uh, just a couple blocks below Canal right near Broadway. I've lived there in that particular location for 37 years and in New York City altogether over 50 years. This is in fact the building where I live and we live on the fifth floor. And if you look really closely, maybe you can see my wife there. Well, not really, I'm not that good. But anyway, that's where we live. Across the street is one of the uh, paintings uh, in the show, which is uh, 45 White Street. This happened to be also in the 9-11 show and this was a um, building that caught my eye in part because of that American flag. And again, I thought it really provided a good emphasis to the painting. So I, I like the painting with the gray of the building, the steps. I always like to paint the steps. And then you have the flag, which added again, uh, some interest. So here are the 20 paintings in the show. And I'm gonna go through them. Um, again, in terms of their different categories. Some are about Central Park, Times Square. Artists, by the way, call these series. What you do is you pick a subject and you focus on it until you get bored with it, or in fact, you've done everything you can do with it. Um, you get the idea. So each of these are kind of like series I've done, and I'm not finished with any of them, actually. Central Park, Times Square, Nights in New York, um, Tribeca, where I live, White Street is where I live, Tribeca in general, Soho, right near me, Queens in Brooklyn, uh, some places in New York City, uh, the parade with the women's champion soccer team, and then finally uh, a bonus, uh, July 4th. I've done some paintings and I'm doing some paintings on July 4th. So here's Central Park, here's uh, Times Square, Here's nightlife. Here's uh, my street, White Street. Here's uh, my white, white street in snow. Here's Tribeca. Here's Soho. Here's other places in New York City, Queens, Brooklyn. Here's some locations in New York. Here's the parade of the uh, women's soccer champions some years ago. So again, we're going to go through each of those. By the way, there will be some time for questions. I, I, uh, I tend to talk right along, but I've allowed some time for questions. And so if you have some questions at the end, I'm certainly happy to talk about any of this with you. So here's 
Central Park. Um, I've done several paintings of Central Park, different angles. The one on the left, the very famous bridge, the Gapstone Bridge. And I caught some tourists one day standing there. This is one of my more realistic paintings because I took a bit of time on it. And in fact, my wife said, this is one she'd rather be not sell, which I, I take as a compliment. Um, anyway, uh, I thought it was nice. And also you had the couple there doing a selfie with the, with the bridge. And the bridge is really one of the nicer sides of Central Park. On the right, I used to uh, live near Central Park up in the 60s, East 60s of Manhattan. And if any of you live there and have had young kids, uh, you know, you can often go there to go sledding. Although we didn't have a sled, we used cardboard boxes. And so um, this was based on a photo, but on the other hand, it reminded me of when I took my two sons, when my wife and I took our two sons to Central Park and they slid down some of the hills there. One at the bottom is a more recent painting. I'm, one of my series is actually on weddings, brides and weddings. And I've only, I think this is the only one on wedding that I'm having the show here. But um, I have weddings in Paris, weddings in New York, weddings in Istanbul, uh, weddings all over in, in Hong Kong. And um, that always makes, I always thought that was kind of interesting to see how people are acting in weddings. And here, um, one of the uh, places in, you see in, in uh, oops, I'm sorry. One of the places you see in Central Park where people take photos a lot where artists take photos is in fact the, uh, the fountain. And so I thought, what would happen if there was some kind of a traffic jam there? And here you have at least three photographers trying to get photographs of uh, brides and grooms uh, at the fountain. Oops, what's going on here? This is not in the show, but I thought you might find it interesting. At the bottom is the gates. That was an exhibit set up uh, by Christo many, many years ago and um, with his associate, oh, I should also say. And the gates was uh, 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 like sales almost set up in Central Park of that particular russet orange. I thought it was a great painting opportunity. So again, I did some paintings. One of the things I thought was interesting why I show you this is, um, and I've asked artists the same question. Don, do you ever paint the same thing more than once? And the answer is if it sells, if it sells, I sure do. And I actually painted the gates three times. Three people have a painting of the gates that I did. Uh, they're all based more or less on the same photo. You can see that, but they're slightly different. Uh, I don't have the picture of the third one, uh, the, um, uh, that one has traveled somewhere. I'm not quite sure where it is right now. But the point is that uh, as an artist, sometimes you do that. I've asked other artists and they say, oh yeah, sometimes I do that. Paint again, the same painting. I will tell you, it's not fun. Uh, I do it uh, more for, well, maybe I can sell it again. Or frankly, I do it because, you know, I like that painting so much. I really would like to keep it. <laughs> And one of the things when you become an artist, again, those of you artists know this, is you have to be willing to part with your paintings. Uh, I started as an artist doing silk screen prints. That was really easy because I would, you know, make 30 copies of the, of the print and I didn't care how many I sold as long as I had a couple left for myself. With paintings, it's, it's you know, it's one off, it's one of a kind. Except then I realized I could paint them again. But again, as I said, it's not a lot of fun to paint the same thing again, because the first time you're discovering colors and positions and shapes, the second time you are recreating. And you might say, Don, why don't you just do it from scratch? Well, I wouldn't get the same effect then. So I just finished something recently. I saw the painting I really liked, and I painted it again. It took me three days, but I did it. I like it, <laughs> I'll sell it again. Um, series I've been very active in uh, following with is, is Times Square. And the backstory is I just enjoy Times Square because it's so busy, so many things going on. And you can also see 
that I have a liking for all the superheroes, you know, that inhabit Metropolis or Gotham City or wherever, whatever you like to call it. And of course, they are there in part uh, for the tourists. So people who are coming to New York City and they go to Times Square, they can get their picture taken with uh, Captain America, Batman, Spidey, or the Mouse family, Mickey Mouse. Uh, we can do all of that. I'm sure there's a slight charge. It's New York after all, but uh, I thought it's always kind of fun for me to walk through Central, uh, through a Times Square, excuse me, walk through Times Square and see all these superheroes. Now, the one on the left is um, looking, uh, I believe it's south, the Coca-Cola ad, and that's Times Square at night. And um, again, you can see the usual characters. See Wonder Woman is there too, I think, and Batman. On the right-hand side is Times Square in the day. I think you're looking north there. And again, you can see the flash and you can see uh, a whole bunch of other people there. Uh, Captain America I mentioned already. Uh, down below is a painting I did for my holiday card one year. And that also has several superheroes in it. And I used to ask people, can you count the superheroes? There are eight, can you find them all? And this used to be uh, fun for the children. They would show the card to the children and say, can you find the superheroes uh, in the card? But there's more Times Square. These are not in the show, I don't think. This is um, New Year's Eve in Times Square. Well, not really Times Square anymore because I changed the name to either Metropolis or Gotham City. Now, if you look closely here in the foreground, especially, you see Spider-Man Spider with that famous upside down kiss. I think that was in the first movie. Uh, then you also see just to the right of Spider-Man, you see Batman and Wonder Woman um, in an embrace. Who knew? I did. Batman and Wonder Woman are outside of the Marvel books. They, uh, they're very friendly. Uh, you have the Hulk and his girlfriend. And I, I, did, I did my research for this painting. There's a green Hulk, a woman, a female. I, again, I didn't know if you knew that, but I, I didn't know it until I started the painting. Then uh, Superman is kissing Lois Lane. The Mouse family is celebrating. If you go to the left, you can see the Joker and Batgirl is in the painting, Supergirl is in the painting, Robin is in the painting, um, the Black Panther is in the painting, the Black Panther's girlfriend is in the painting. So I think there are about 15 or 16 superheroes in this painting. And this was just a lot of fun to paint. The only problem is I had to paint 500 people. And um, first of all, just keeping them steady, you know, not moving for two hours was very, I'm kidding. Uh, obviously, I, I did this from a lot of photos, but also from my own imagination. But my wife would say, you know, when are you going to finish that thing? And again, it would take, it took a while because every one of those heads had to be different. I mean, I didn't want to have, I didn't want to take the easy way out and draw the same head 500 times. So each of these is basically a different person which is one of the things I think about when I paint. Um, I try to have people in my paintings, like I showed you earlier that Ocean Fair painting. And each of the people I try to have, I, I try to paint them so they have a personality. So they're going somewhere or doing something or, or like Bat, Batman and Wonder Woman, they're having a rather close encounter. So. I look at this painting and I think of not a story, but a hundred stories. I like that so much. I did a painting of Tokyo uh, of New Year's. And um, my, my family and I went on a vacation to Tokyo uh, a few years ago. And if you're familiar with Tokyo, there's a major, major, major intersection, huge intersection in uh, downtown Tokyo. And uh, the crosswalk you can see the white bars, the crosswalks are 30 feet across. And I thought what fun it would be if Godzilla shows up for New Year's because hey, you know, monsters need to have fun too. And so um, I decided to put Godzilla in the painting and you can see there he's got a hat, he's got two noisemakers. You got a problem with that? Uh, I don't think so. Godzilla can do what he wants, I think pretty much. 
the thing is that I realized that after I finished the painting, most of the people in the square in the Tokyo crossing there haven't noticed Godzilla yet, because I think when they notice Godzilla, probably their demeanors will change just a little bit. They'll probably get the heck out of there as quickly as they can. Anyway, that's Tokyo New Year's with Godzilla. Night in New York City. Um, I was at a meeting one night at an organization I'm a member of, and I came out and 7th Avenue and 33rd Street, that's the painting on the left. 7th Avenue and 33rd Street. And I looked at it and first of all, I love the colors. I don't paint with purple often. And suddenly I found purple and it was in the subred stand and some of the signs. And then you had the blue of the police uniforms and um, surrounded by black. So I thought this was kind of interesting. I mean, how many times have we all walked by separate stands? And I thought, well, you know, maybe it's a little mysterious, the uh, separate stand. You know, I know hot dogs, how, how mysterious is that? But I looked at it and I said, well, yeah, maybe I can get a little bit of a, of a feeling there. And I liked especially the way the, the yellow of the subret and even the yellow of the hot dog roll played against the blacks and the blues and the purples. Penny on the right has a little story. I was um, having dinner by myself one night at a restaurant in Soho, Spring Street, by the way. And as I was sitting there, I noticed over at the bar, this young woman checking her, her, her cell phone. Um, I never, never saw her face, by the way, but I took a picture because I said, you know, that's an interesting photo. And I call this another Thursday night another Thursday night. It was Thursday night when I was having dinner, but I was thinking, I was thinking, what is she thinking as she's searching her cell phone? And I was thinking later that maybe she's thinking, what am I going to do tonight? Who am I going to talk to? Where am I going to go? And hopefully she did find some happy place or thing to do that night. But anyway, as I said, I call this another Thursday night. My street. Tribeca, White Street. The painting on the left was very nearly the first painting I think I ever did with my technique. And what do you know, it won a best in show. Uh, <laughs> uh, beginner's luck. Um, there's an excellent Italian restaurant, by the way, Petrarca, at the corner of Church and White Street. And that's the building, not the red building, but the orangish building. Excellent, uh, go there once a week at least. So if you're ever in the Tribeca neighborhood, uh, just a couple blocks south of Canal uh, on Church and corner of White Street. But then you see the beginning of all the buildings. My understanding is my, my block White Street is the only block in New York City completely cast iron buildings. Everything on our block is a cast iron building. And you saw early on the building I live in, it looks like the others you see at the beginning of this painting. On the right, you have a painting I also showed you earlier, which is uh, directly across from where I live. This is 45 White Street. And again, it's a cast iron building. And then on the bottom, uh, you have a painting, which is I don't believe is in the show, but I thought I'd add a few extra paintings like I did with the gates, uh, just to give you more perspective here. And that's again, part of White Street. In fact, it's the same part as the upper left, only it's a few more buildings. And you can still see that. Italian restaurant there at the very end of those tall gray buildings. That's Petrarca. Snow. I love snow in New York City. As I said, I've lived here for more than 50 years. I used to live on 63rd and 2nd, and my apartment looked up 2nd Avenue. And I can remember one time when we had one of these terrific snowfalls in New York City, like 18 inches, no cars, no people. And I looked out my window and what to my wondering eyes did appear, but a sleigh with two horses, no reindeer, sorry. And there were no cars, but someone had a sleigh and hitched it up to a couple of horses and they were coming down second half. Well, this is one of those major snowstorms uh, on my street, White Street. And um, I always loved this scene because there you have all the 
oldest older buildings in New York City. Again, <laughs> I hate to keep giving him commercials, uh, but he because uh, I don't think he's going to give me a free drink. But he's a good friend, uh, Leo, who runs that restaurant. That's again that red building on the left. That's the restaurant I was telling you about. By the way, the restaurant used to be um, a strip club called the the Baby Doll Lounge, and um, my wife actually appreciated that because she'd come home late at night. And there was always a bouncer standing at the door of the Baby Doll Lounge. And so she always felt safe because of the baby doll lounge. Never went in there, actually. Uh, of course, now I've been in there a lot. It's a restaurant. But anyway, um, one day the baby doll lounge become Petrarca Italian restaurant. So anyway, you get the idea. And there's a poor fellow stranded. He doesn't know what to do with his car. The one in the right foreground. Well, I like this scene so much, I painted it again. And this time I added a bit more color. There's some green in this, which, which changes it a bit but it's still the same scene. And I tell you, I painted things three times. Well, I painted this three times. I've only sold one of these, but this was my first sale. And that's the painting on the bottom. That was my first sale for four figures. And that's a big deal when you're an artist. Um, it's a pretty large painting, by the way. It's about 30 by 36, which for me is pretty large. Um, so basically, uh, if you look at it, it's it's very peaceful. And again, no cars going on the road because of the high snow. Tribeca. Once a year in Tribeca, we have a festival called the Taste of Tribeca. And many of the local restaurants, and when I say many, I mean 20 or 30, set up booths and sell food. I know this also happens in other parts of New York as well. And so um, my wife actually works for the New York City school system. So she's often in, involved in organizing it. This particular painting was a commission. And if you can see on the front foreground on the left, there's a blonde woman in an orange vest. She's about, she's in a group of three and she's on the right hand side. This is a commission for her. She was one of the organizers of, of the event that year. And she wanted me to paint the, um, the festival. And I said, fine. And she said, uh, would you put me in it? I said, fine. And I said, how much do you want to weigh? Uh, because one of the things you can do as a painter is uh, you can do things with people, with trees, whatever. This is, she was not overweight. This was basically the way she looked. But again, um, she, I believe she enjoyed the painting very much because it could show her with some of her colleagues, you know, managing, uh, Taste of Tribeca. It's for a good cause, by the way. Uh, PS 150 and 234, both schools down here, and my, my sons went to PS 234. Um, they get money uh, from this the sale of food. You know, the, the restaurants donate the money to the two schools and they use it to help, for example, finance art programs. So you can see that I especially liked it. In fact, my art, my career as a, as a professional artist really started here because they used to have an auction. And I uh, painted a painting of the Tribeca Festival and it sold. And this was, I don't know, 35 years ago, 35 years ago. And I said, that's interesting. Maybe I can actually succeed doing this. So this was, I owe a lot to this festival. And again, it's very good for our neighborhood. On the right is a uh, street, Staples Street, which is right near actually the uh, Tribeca, Taste of Tribeca. In fact, where I was standing, when I painted the picture on the left, if I turned to the right, I would see the view on the right. And I always think of that as like the Bridge of Sighs in Venice. As an aside though, one of my day jobs, well actually my major day job, for 50 years I, I taught at Columbia University. And this area was where Columbia started. It was called King's College then. And so it started back then. Moved to uh, where um, the um, Rockefeller Center is today, and then eventually moved up to 116th Street, which used to be farmlands. So a little history there as well. Soho. So if you walk out of my street, out of my building, out of White Street to, ch to church and take a right, this is what you see. You're looking at Soho. Soho is across the way. And then that's the painting on the left. Uh, that's Canal Street in the foreground. On the right, that's about one block into Soho. And I kind of like this. Uh, I believe I sold this to some people who used to live 
right near here. Uh, I think they lived in that building that's in the foreground. A lot of my works, uh, you can tell right away, I am not abstract. I am very relentlessly <laughs> representational. And I find that the people who do like my works, uh, hopefully some of you, but if you like my work typically, it's because it connects to something in your life, the place you live, where you propose marriage, uh, where your kids grew up, whatever. I, and I, I like that. I like to do commissions because by doing that, I'm painting things that people like that will affect them and touch them. Soho. Um, I, my, my, I believe that my, this painting on the left um, was when my two boys, our two boys were much younger and they were walking around looking at things in Soho. There were all the wonderful street vendors on a Sunday. On the right-hand side, another big painting. Uh, this was about 30 by 40 inches. Um, the tour bus going through Soho. The person who bought this, in fact, used to work as a guide on one of those tour buses. And so she liked the painting a lot, in part because it reminded her of her days working back in Soho. This is not in the exhibit, but I thought you might find it interesting. Um, again, I live on White Street between Broadway and Church. About a year or so ago, there were a lot of demonstrations in Soho marching down Broadway. Um, this painting is one, frankly, I imagined. I did not take a photo of this. I wasn't there at the time. On the other hand, I knew the crowd was there because the building I live in, afterwards there were windows broken and we boarded up after that. And we were not upset. We just felt that people were, at least the people that broke our windows, you know, were just showing off some steam. To me, more important was the relationship here between the crowd and the officers, the, the legal, the law officers. In fact, there would have been a barrier between the two groups. And in fact, when I first started painting this, I had a barrier. And I said, no, I'm gonna take that barrier down. Because what I wanted to show was the tension, not the good or bad or the right side or the wrong side, but the tension between on the one hand, the demonstrators who I will agree, and I will in fact maybe even agree with them, they had things to say. And on the other hand, you had the law officers who had responsibilities. And it was gonna be difficult to resolve them in this situation. So this is the beginning of a series which I have not um, done a lot with yet, but I'm going to do a whole series dealing with demonstrations and, and law officers and proceed where that will go. But this is the beginning of a series I thought you might find it interesting. Other places in New York. Um, this is for fun. You know, I do things for fun the same way I did Godzilla in Tokyo. Um, I was thinking that Spider Man must occasionally get tired of swinging on buildings. And so there's a double joke actually in this painting. The one is Spider-Man uh, glued to the top of a of subway car, the R train, call this the R train to Queens, and which is where he lives by the way. Um, and the one joke is him being in the car. The second joke is that you have four New Yorkers sitting there paying no attention whatsoever to Spidey. And I said, that's New York, <laughs> that's New York. We don't care, we could have had Batman in there as well and we wouldn't care. But on the other hand, I'm doing another painting. I haven't got around to it yet. I don't have, I don't have any problem with coming up with ideas for paintings. Uh, so I have another idea, which is going to be um, a bunch of um, people um, um, celebrating uh, let's say the New York Yankees World Series victory. I'm a Yankees fan. Well, sorry, Mets people. I'm a Yankees fan. And 
they're going to be celebrating a Yankees victory. And sitting on the seats will be Spider-Man, Batman, and Wonder Woman checking their cell phones. And I, you know, that's going to be the mate to this painting. I haven't got that one done yet, but I will. I will. Uh, this was the very first commission I sold. Um, woman wanted a birthday gift for her husband. And he really liked this square in Brooklyn. He really liked it. Now, I will confess to you, I have never been there. <laughs> uh, but I asked her, can you provide me with some photos? And uh, she did. And uh, she apparently was very happy with the result. But this is a farmer's market there. And um, I kind of like the painting too. But again, this was my first commission. And I realized, you know, people can like memories and getting the memories they want. Other places in New York. Um, as I said, for 50 years, I taught at Columbia. And I'm sure you know Columbia, that's Low Library, which is the central part of Columbia. And this was a, a snowy day at Columbia, as you can see. And I, it's a photo I took. Originally, the couple on the left were not facing each other. Originally, they were walking along too. And I said, eh, let me add a little romance here. So again, as I said, when you paint, you can do whatever the heck you want with people. So I turned them so the man and woman were facing each other, young man, young woman, and embraced them. And so I thought this was kind of a nice feel for the painting. Meanwhile, the guy with the Columbia color, Columbia colors are blue, if you didn't know that, is walking along, paying no attention whatsoever. Um, the right-hand side is Grand Central Station. This was the hardest painting I've done. <laughs> and and uh, at the beginning, I didn't think it was going to be so hard. Uh, but it has so many shapes. It was interesting, but it's just difficult. Now, the painting is called Central Park Wedding. I mean, sorry, not Central Park, Grand Central Wedding. Grand Central Wedding. And if you can see there in the middle, uh, you can see the white of the bride's dress uh, right near the ticket counter in Grand Central. And um, she has a string quartet, and then her guests are sitting there as well. And you might say, who gets married in Central in Grand Central? Well, <laughs> people do. And uh, in fact, a couple, at least on a couple of occasions, I've been walking through Grand Central, seen weddings or seen people dress for a wedding. And so, you know, watch out. There may be a wedding going on there. So I thought this was kind of fun. And this is part of my wedding series. And then at the bottom, um, and I don't think this is in the show, but at the bottom, uh, I call this one Lincoln Center Afternoon. Um, I always like the fountains at Lincoln Center. And um, by the way, all these people weren't there at the same time. I took various photos and I just put them together. Again, if you're a painter, you can do that. And I guess nowadays, if you're a photographer, you can do that too. But I just put all these people together. Lincoln Center Afternoon. Um, I live again downtown, as I mentioned. And uh, when the USA women won this, the soccer championships, that was wonderful. I thought it was wonderful. I was excited by it. And I knew they were gonna have a parade downtown. So I went to the parade downtown and um, took a lot of photos, but a lot of the photos are people taking, using their cell phones to take photos of the parade. In fact, on the left there, you can see the uh, one of the floats which carried several of the uh, thing they had two floats with the whole team one float had maybe uh, eight or nine women and so, so did the other one so you know as you watch you can see the whole team go by but again people wearing their women's soccer team's shirts and they were all armed with their cell phones so this was a lot of fun for me and immediately after i took this photo uh which uh, from a point of view of just drawing people, I thought this is the best job I've ever done of drawing a person. Um, but um, not that I don't do other drawings, but I, I really like this drawing because the guy is, is balanced. And if you look at it, you know, his feet are in the right place, his arms are in the right place. But the interesting thing is here's a guy selling souvenirs after the parade. And I, I like the little touch of the little American flag in his hat. 
and he's casing, he's looking. This was, by the way, painted, um, well, this paint, this photograph was taken right near New York City Hall. In fact, this is about 400 yards away from my show, uh, my current show. And uh, you can see how I use my mixed media technique to get the red and the flags and the different grays in the paving. Um, using the oil pastels and the inks uh, was a lot easier for me to do that than if I was using oils. Finally, uh, I'm writing, my current painting now is I'm gonna do some things with uh, July 4th, uh, partly because what I do is on every ho holiday or other significant event, I send an email out with an image to uh, a number of people I have on my emailing list. In fact, if any of you would be interested in that, by the way, I'm, I don't sell you anything. I just send you the images. Um, so I, I send one the July 4th, I send Mother's Day, I send Memorial Day, I send uh, the holidays, I send New Year's Day, all of that. Um, and if you uh, take my email down at the end, it's gonna be on the screen for a while, so you can take it down. Just send me your email, and when the next holiday comes up, which by the way is Father's Day, so I have my Father's Day card all ready to go. And uh, basically I'll, I'll give you a hint. It's gonna be the Central Park one with the kids sledding. I figured, hey, I was a father then, makes sense now, it'll be a Father's Day card. So that's gonna come out on Sunday, uh, this coming Sunday was the 19th, I think it's Father's Day. So, but I do that, as I said, every event, the Chinese New Year's, I do for Chinese New Year's. So if you're interested in getting on my that list, uh, at the very end, just send me your email. I don't even need any text from you. Just send me your email and I'll know what it's for. So anyway, um, I wasn't really happy with this painting. <laughs> I shouldn't really tell you this, the last painting I show you. Um, I like parts of it, but I didn't like the whole thing. So I'm now working on a couple paintings, uh, which are gonna be longer for one thing. And then secondly, surprise, I'm gonna have Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman in them too, because I figure, hey, they take part of New Year's Eve in New York City, you might as well take part of Fourth of July. You know, we're a pretty welcoming group here in New York City. So um, you can watch for that. But anyway, that's my project now, and I'll have a series on July 4th. So that's it, folks. That was all, we're gonna have some time for questions now. But those who are the paintings I talked to you about, um, I can always flip back to this if you have a question about a particular painting. Um, but I just wanna mention thanks Thanks very much to Giovanna and Kenji for uh, getting, giving me this opportunity again to, to do this virtual show at Harrison Public Library. Uh, I really appreciated it. Uh, here are my current shows. What? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, you want me to do this? Um, it, you, are you talking to me or are you talking to someone else? You can't hear me? I hear you. Yeah, okay. I hear you loud and clear, but I heard okay. you say, do you want me to do this or, or somebody no, else? I, I just admitted, I just admitted the person. Oh, that's what you meant. Okay, yes, no, I got them. I think I'm oh, no. okay. I think we're okay, right? Yeah, no, we're good, we're good. Okay. And people have questions, they can use the chat okay. or they can unmute. I'll get to that in just one second. Uh, so for the rest of the year, I have three solo shows. One is in process now. New Amsterdam Library, I'll give you more information on that in a second. Uh, any of you in the Maranek area, uh, or not, I think a lot of you would probably would be, I'm gonna have a show there at the Maranek Artist Guild in October. And by the way, these will all be posted on my website. Uh, and then in November, uh, if you're up in Connecticut at the Kent Memorial Library. But this is the one that's up now. And here's the formal invitation for it. On the top is, uh, it's called Great Cities of the World. On the top is part of a painting. You can't see it all because of the, uh, the banner uh, of the Paris City Hall, the Hotel de Ville in Paris. And they flood it uh, during the winter time so people can skate in front of it. Below is one of the paintings you saw. That's the painting uh, of Times Square during the daytime. On the right, uh, you have the 45 White Street, but you also have paintings of China in Hyderabad, in Tokyo, Sydney, Venice, Kremlin, Dublin, Las Vegas even. So uh, all these are the show. Here's the information for the show. Uh, it's at the New Amsterdam Library. I'll leave this on the screen for a moment. Um, it's downtown Manhattan. It's 9 Murray Street, New Amsterdam. Again, this information is on my website also. 
I'll give you the website in a moment. Um, it's one block west of New York City Hall. And again, it's based uh, fifth, more than 50 works, which is a big show, by the way, based on more than 30 years of my traveling, uh, plus living in New York City. And again, this covers Shanghai, Hyderabad, Isfahan. I used to teach in Iran, Sydney, all this. So again, uh, that's open, as Giovanna mentioned, June 6th till August 11th. August 12th really is when we take it down. Um, nine Amsterdam, uh, nine Murray, I'm sorry, nine Murray Street. And finally, the re there's a reception there. It happened to be in the New York City area. The reception is um, this Thursday, June 16th from five to seven. And uh, there's one hour for mingling and one hour for me talking again, only this time I'll be talking about a different show. Um, so again, any of you interested, um, there's my website, um, sextonart.com. You can see a lot of images there. My email, if you want to send me your email to get, <clears throat> get those images that I send out, uh, please feel free to do. I'm always happy to add to my list. 